Geely's new Galaxy E5 and possibly a Zika version of his vehicle will come to global car markets this year. And this actually could be the most advanced electric SUV we've ever seen. If you look at the battery technology, the fact that they're using massive gigacasting machines to manufacture these cars and the charging speeds, well, yeah. I mean, yeah, I understand that you can only charge them at these kinds of insane speeds in China today, but what about tomorrow or next year? Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. It's great to see you guys. Guys, I've just been to China. I've seen some of these Geely EVs. I've seen some EVs from Zika, from other car manufacturers. Blown my mind. Absolutely insane. To see them in person, to see the quality of them. I'll personally never even remotely consider buying a BMW Mercedes. By the way, I do own a BMW at the moment. That's going. It's about to leave. If you want it, you can have it. Anyhow, I'll never consider buying one of them again. It's just, why would you? I mean, honestly, why Why would you? Once you've driven some of these new Chinese EVs, it, there just isn't any reason to do so. And honestly, put it this way, if you think that's silly, if you think I'm like being hyperbolic or being, um, I don't know, bombastic or whatever you, whatever you want to call it, if you think that's silly, then tell me, which Mercedes, Audi or BMW electric car has this kind of battery technology or something even remotely close, like something within the stratosphere of being, oh, we're not as good, but we're, we're you know, we're only 20% away. Uh, tell me, tell me what it is. I mean, honestly, I'm going to wait here. I'll wait for your emails. Contact at theelectricviking.com. I'll read every one of them. If any one of you can give me this technology, please do it. And it's not as though they're not spending. They're spending billions of dollars, but they don't have it. W why? I don't know. Anyhow, Geely Galaxy E5, it uses an 11-in-1 intelligent electric drive system. This integrates 11 major devices such as motors, electronic controls, and the total weight of those components has been significantly reduced to only 79.8 kilograms or about, 100 and, about 170 pounds, 180 pounds. Anyhow, the efficiency of this EV is 90.04%. Power consumption is a staggering 11.9 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That's per 60 miles, guys. So 11.9 kilowatt hours of energy. That actually means it's more efficient than a Tesla Model 3. I don't know how that's possible, but apparently it is. The motor, peak power 160 kilowatt for the rear wheel drive version. And that's about 220 horsepower. It uses an Infineon TC397 chip to enable high communication efficiency and fast power response. Basically, um, computing power that's much better than what you're seeing from legacy automakers today. Now, the Geely Galaxy E5 uses the Geely Electric Architect or the GEA platform, which is kind of a modification of the Sustainable Experience Architecture, which is called SEA. Anyway, it uses, who cares about all that, right? It uses gigacasting, which makes them, these vehicles significantly safer in a crash than your crappy internal combustion gasoline car, which is much less safe, much more likely to, well, to basically deform in a crash. That's a true fact, guys. Just think about the physics of it. You need to tell your friends this, by the way. If your friends have got kids and they want to live in a crash, tell your friends this stuff. Guys, if you don't have gigacasting in your car, some form of cell-to-body architecture, then and you're buying a new car, then come on, you're an idiot. That's just plain stupid. I mean, there's. I sound like I'm talking emotion. It's not. It's just pure fact here, guys. Gigacasting is much stronger in a collision the chances of deformation of your car, like in a massive collision, your car dropping off a cliff, we've seen those videos, and then deforming and killing you, it's much lower if you have gear casting. It's just a simple fact. So look at the car you buy before you buy an EV or before you buy any car and can say to yourself, this car, it's got five stars for safety maybe, but let's have a look at the actual deformation crash test and see if that's actually legitimate. In China, it's well considered, and I've been told this by numerous sources, that if you have a vehicle made with cell-to-body architecture, which is basically gigacasting, the car is much safer. A lot of people are saying, I'm not buying, buying anything else. Why the hell would I? Right? All the safety technology in the world often will do nothing for you. The structural rigidity of the car matters. And that's one of the things that obviously Geely have integrated into their cars. And guys, clearly it's working. Look at their car sales this year. They've grown by more than 40% in China. They're one of the fastest growing car manufacturers in the world. Yeah, anyhow, there will be an EV version of this car and a plug-in hybrid. 
Apparently, they'll be able to run on green methanol. Anyway, in addition, apparently this vehicle will be very good at doing the moose test. I've never paid much attention to moose tests. Have you guys? Let me know in the comments. Acceleration, 6.9 seconds. Now, by the way, keep in mind, this is the cheap version of this car, and it will come with what I believe is the best battery in the world. In fact, just if you just think of it objectively, it's, it is the best battery in the world. And I've made a couple of videos on this battery technology. The golden battery, the Aegis or the AEGIS battery, Aegis battery. The Geely E5 uses a four speed intelligent energy recovery system. So there's four different modes. This adjusts braking force in real time based on vehicle distance, road congestion, and ramp information, providing a more comfortable ride. In other words, it's using its cameras to adjust how regen braking works in your environment. I don't know if there's any other car doing that. If there is, I'm not aware of it. Please inform me. Top speed, 180 kilometers an hour. So what, just nearly 120 miles an hour. It's fast enough, right? But getting to the most important part of this car, in my opinion, that is its battery pack. Now guys, I know the BYD Blade battery is very safe, and I've told you that many times, it is. This battery, I believe, is even safer. And the reason I say that is because of the actual, the actual structure of the battery. I'm gonna make a new video on this to kind of illustrate my point. I don't have long enough in this video, otherwise you'd be bored to death for those people not interested in that, this stuff, but it's thermal runaway capability. has It's basically eliminated the, the possibility of thermal runaway the Aegis battery. That's the, that's the big evolution of this battery pack. I, from what I can see, it looks almost impossible to set the thing on fire. But anyway, I'll get to that in a separate video. The battery has the ability to charge at 550 kilowatt. Now, whether this architecture will support that, I don't know. Um, new Zika vehicles do have that capacity, 550 kilowatt fast charging. F that's crazy. But also equally crazy is it has an energy density of, I believe, around 230 watt hours per kilogram, giving it the energy density of something like a 46 knot. It's pretty much on par with a, 40, a Tesla 4680 cell battery. But of course, they're lithium ion phosphate. They're going in the, the cheaper versions of Geely cars. So not only this is it super high energy density for an, it's the highest energy density lithium ion phosphate battery in the world it's got the fastest charging of basically any mass manufactured battery in the world and it's almost impossible to set the thing on fire because of its incredible thermal runaway capabilities now that tells you all you need to know right range here's the other thing this gives you a good idea as well this is a big vehicle yeah it's not small it's, well, it's not massive. I mean, it's slightly smaller than a Model Y in terms of length, but overall size, pretty similar to something like a Model Y. But look at the battery pack size. It's really small, but the range is good. Range, 530 kilometers with a 60 kilowatt hour battery. Now there's two versions, two battery options, a 49 kilowatt hour option, which has 440 kilometers of range, which is about 270, 80, 280 miles around there. 270 miles and then a 530 kilometer option which uses a 60 kilowatt hour battery so this is a bigger vehicle than a BYD Addo 3 it has more range and the battery pack is the same size so you can see the energy density here starting to play out the energy density of this battery is quite a lot it's it's probably about uh, just over 30 percent more energy dense than a BYD Blade battery gives you some context here guys these cars apparently this is coming to australia this car and it's coming this is the global version it's a geely pretty much geely's first global ev the car measures 4.6 meters long so 4615 millimeters so it's basically one size up from a boid at 03. it comes with either 18 or 19 inch wheels now obviously if you get the 18 inch wheels you'll get more range even if someone tells you that's not true it is true Inside the car has a, an LCD instrument screen, a heads-up display for the driver. I've used this heads-up display in Zika cars. It does work well. It has a digital display for the driver as well. Apparently it has a Flim Auto Car Machine system, which was developed in conjunction with Geely Controlled Mizu. Anyway, they've got their own sound, guys. Geely and Zika and um, the company, they've developed their, new, uh, their own sound system. And apparently it's quite good. 
The Geely Galaxy E5 system will be powered by the Dragon Eagle F1 chip. This is the first domestically produced seven nanometer automotive chip. Buyers will have a choice of three different interior colors, says Car News China. Now, a lot of this information has come from Car News China, guys, but also my experience being in China and driving some of these new vehicles. Now, the Geely Galaxy Aegis battery apparently can accurately predict and preempt thermal runaways and other situations, which Geely claims increases battery life by 20%. In other words, the battery will last longer than the life of the car. You'll probably be 80 years old by the time the battery wears out. So it, the whole idea of people saying, oh, but you've got to replace the battery in eight years, that's just ridiculous. It's probably not the case for most EVs, but in particular, newer EVs with lithium-ion phosphate batteries are getting more and more advanced. And as you can see, charging speed is insane. Now, I know there's not many chargers uh, around outside of China that can charge at those speeds, but give it a couple of years and there will be. They are certainly going to come. Thanks for watching.